Hey, excuse me. Nice to meet you. It's Phil Morrison. I help naturally quiet people to overcome social anxiety and play to their strengths in life. I've prepared some content for today's video on my phone. So I'm going to read from some notes. And the topic is how to thrive as a quiet person who doesn't want to be the center of attention. So the first point to make is that not wanting to be in the spotlight and hogging the attention of the group isn't necessarily a bad thing. I would say that a lot of people actually get annoyed um, when other people bulldoze and try to take over the conversation rather than share it out fairly. So it's not a bad thing that you don't want to spend um, a lot of time in the spotlight. This comes from a place of empathy as you're genuinely happy for other people to speak. This makes other people feel valued and feel welcome in the group and it creates a, a good atmosphere and a good energy. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you should always be speaking to be present in the group. This is a trap that I used to fall into um, personally. I used to think that if I'm not speaking, um, I'm not part of the social interaction and I might as well not be there. But this is completely not true. So empathetic listening, active, true listening, um, not thinking what to say next, but genuinely listening. This is a contribution to a social group. As talking to a person who's truly listening is worlds apart from talking to a brick wall. Take me, for example, as a coach. I spend a lot of time listening to other people. People pay money to do something called talking therapy, where they talk about their problems and challenges to someone who's actively listening. So empathetic, um, genuine listening is a contribution to a social group. The other trap to avoid is panicking because others are naturally louder and more extroverted than you. And then fearing that no one will get to know you as you're not sharing your personality. This is a trap that I also used to fall into. So it's not true, um, providing that you're genuinely patient with yourself and you begin to let your guard down once you're comfortable with people in the group. People will get to know you over time and you have to trust in that. And just as you're being patient with yourself, other people will be patient with you. Or I should say that the right people that are worth being friends with will be patient with you. And it's true that sometimes less is more and people will value what you're saying um, because it's gonna stand out more um, as you speaking is rarer. Example that comes to mind would be um, Peter K. So because Peter K, Peter K um, doesn't overdose you with TV appearances when he's on, um, lots of people tune in and really value his content. But if he was on panel shows left, right and centre on every single TV channel, after a while um, you would get annoyed and bored and um, value the content less. So extroverted people um, often make other people um, feel sick, tired and annoyed of constantly hearing their opinions. 
This is not the case if you're a naturally quiet person. And as you're listening more um, and probably have um, higher levels of empathy than the average person. So I'm an empath, I have um, naturally high levels of empathy. You'll come across very well in one-to-one -one and small group conversations um, with people um, in your tribe, whether it's people at work, friendship group, and this is because you've spent a lot of time listening to people and you've learned about those people. You've processed what they're like. And this means that you have more information to go off when you're speaking to them. You actually remember what they've said. You've taken it in and processed it. Whereas lots of other people, um, they don't truly listen and remember what other people tell them. So in the one-on-ones and small group conversations, naturally quiet people often come alive, come out of their shell and um, perform really, really well. And I try to um, recreate this um, when I do my in-person live events for small groups of people. I, I allow the quiet people to, to speak more often than they usually would and they often realize that they have a natural confidence um, when they allow themselves to um, be authentic rather than force themselves to be an extrovert and be something that they're not. And also it's important to realize that you can be amazing at building trust with people fast because you have high levels of empathy and your approach to not bulldoze and take over conversations basically gives other people evidence that you're a good person. And this means that they feel that they can rely on you because you're going to act with them and the team in mind rather than selfishly. So you're a team player rather than just looking after um, number one. So I guess the, the summary of this video is don't panic or worry if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to be hogging the attention of a social group. It's not a bad thing. Quiet people are often described as dark horses they say that it's the quiet ones you've got to watch out for. There's lots of strengths that naturally quiet people have, um, something that I've learned personally and in coaching my clients um, to play to their natural strengths. So I hope that you got value from this content. My call to action is that I offer people a free two hour one-to-one -one coaching session, which can either be over a video call, or if you're willing to come down to Birmingham, happy to meet you for a coffee. And I help you process um, what you need to process and get more confident. If you're interested in trying your um, free coaching session, drop me an email, Phil Morrison, 678 at gmail.com also um, drop me an email if you want to learn about my live events that I run every month and if you enjoyed the content feel free to subscribe and follow me so you get notified when I release more stuff have an awesome rest of your day